stopped when the visitor was introducing her relationship with Nixon. So she said, Nixon, here is my elder brother. We parted when I was eight years old and tears came to, her, to mess up her beautifully applied mascara. The entire family sat quietly as they listened to Juliet's experience. And that's how Jesus changed my life and guided my steps here, she concluded. However, Betcha wondered why Nixon had never told her that part of the story. She decided that was not the best time to inquire because Nixon himself was perturbed by the turn of events. Next days, the brother and sister continued catching up on their experiences, but Betcha looked more disturbed and kept off. With time, she developed the habit of disappearing into the spare guest room frequently. Whenever Nixon asked her what the matter was, she responded that she was all right. My brother, have I offended Betcha by my coming? Juliet asked Nixon one afternoon. No, my sister, I don't think it's you. My wife is a very hospitable person. There must be a different explanation for her behavior, he assured her. He had also started getting worried because the guest room Betcha frequented was now under lock and key whenever she was not using it. Yeah, I'm going to buy a few groceries. I will be back soon, Betcha said to Nixon. Can I go with you? He inquired. No, I'll be back shortly. Do not worry. For a strange reason, Nixon felt the, the need to check the guest house, guest room. Fortunately, Betcha had forgotten to lock it. He went in and found a note on the bed. Just as he was starting to read it, he heard Betcha's voice in the living room. She was asking her daughter to bring her a shopping bag she had forgotten on the kitchen table. As she was about to leave, she went to check on the guest room door. She found it unlocked. She quickly opened it, took the key from the back of the door, locked it, and quickly hurried on to her errand. That was a narrow escape, muttered Nixon as he was coming from under the bed. I hope she has not locked me inside here, he said as he moved towards the door. To his dismay, he was locked in and the room was on the third floor with no exit. Meanwhile, Betcha went to the supermarket and finished her shopping. As she was driving home, she got a phone call from a close friend who had an emergency. She, quick, she drove quickly to help her friend, whose child had, taken, had been taken ill suddenly. After two hours, her phone rang, but she was in the doctor's office. She told herself she'd answer later. Finally, with the phone ringing incessantly, she decided to pick it. It was Juliet calling. Hello, she responded. Have you seen Nixon? His car is parked outside, but we have not seen him, and it's now nine o'clock. What are you seeing? I thought I left him in the house. All right, I'm on my way. Quickly, she told her friend there was an emergency, and she drove home like a mad woman. In reaching the house, she found out that Nixon could not be reached. His mobile number was ringing, but in their bedroom. 
she panicked and was about to call some of Nixon's friend when she decided she needed to pick something from the guest room, her diary. She hurried upstairs and opened the door only to find Nixon peacefully sleeping on the bed. What? Nixon, what are you doing here? What are you looking for? All over? Nixon, who had been deep asleep, woke up, looking confused at what was happening. What are you saying? First of all, where am I? He inquired. You are in the guest room. Oh my, what are you doing reading my notes? She said accusingly. Nixon soon found his bearing and recalled how he had found himself in the room. He decided to keep quiet until Betcha came down. Betcha, he called her. She knew he was very serious because he rarely called her by her first name. She came down and sat on the chair opposite him. Now, please listen to me, Betcha. What made you think I would not understand what you are going through? What? I don't understand what you're talking about. She responded scared. You know what I'm saying, he replied firmly, showing her the note he had read. Oh, I may... Could go no further. So Nixon stood and put a hand on her shoulder. When she composed herself, she told him that the coming of his sister Juliet had evoked memories of her family whose whereabouts she did not know. Daily, she found herself getting sadder. Hence, she had decided to use the guest room as a place of prayer and searching for answers. My dear wife, I wish you would have just opened up to me. I am sorry. Probably, I was also, so, I was also insensitive to your needs. There was a heart-to-heart -heart conversation, and when they came out of the room, the entire household, including Juliet, felt that something significant had happened. The guest room became a place Nixon and Betcher visited daily, as they talked and prayed over many things, including the implications of, the, of Nixon's new job offer in Australia. As time wore on, they realized they would have to make major adjustments. Finally, as a family, they decided they would all move to Australia for the sake of their stability. Betcha made some applications to a few universities too. In about three months, Nixon and his family packed and left for Australia. He left his palatial home under the care of Juliet, who soon found a job and was taking care of all things well. Chapter 15 got a job at Don University it's next to their residence, their new residence. The family settled in Australia. Soon, Nixon was busy building the communications firm with his skills. He had risen through the ranks and was appointed the chief executive officer. Betcha also got busy and in between looking after her family and work, completed her doctorate degree. She was soon heading the Department of Communication at Redon University. Children attended nearby schools. With the time, the family also got involved in the activities of their home church fellowship. Hurry up, Teresa. We must go to the airport now, or our visitors will start panicking. Beja hurried her teenage daughter, who had grown to be as beautiful as her mother. Yes, ma'am, I'm right here. Let's go, replied getting into the car. Wow, you look great. Running eyes, I believe. Betcha joked as she reversed the car out of the garage. Soon, they were on the way to the airport. They reached the less busy away, and in half an hour, they reached. For more, join me next time.